Yo, what's up, Kavi here from Ray Studios, and this is the Velotrix Thunder One ST review. <laughs> First thing first, let's do an unboxing and put this back together. It all came very nicely packed in this box and as soon as you open it I started to realize how easy it was to get it out of the box and ready to go. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we need to remove all the protection, which by the way was not much but very well placed so it will protect the bike very nicely. So there were no scratches whatsoever on this bike on shipping it basically arrived in perfect condition and as you can see the bike came basically almost ready to go it also came with a nice toolkit box a quick start guide and a small instruction manual for the fine mind application and inside the toolkit we can find another small box this is for the charger brick the charger brick is relatively small because it's just a two amp charger you also have the pedals the light we have a quad lock adapter for your phone or phone case. We have a bell. We have a light and a red and white reflector. And of course, we also have the stand, a few spare screws and a whole set of tools. So you don't need absolutely any tools of your own to put this bike together. The procedure is rather easy. You just get the front wheel, put it in there and you put the screw. Then you need to put the stand, the seat, make sure to adjust the pedals correctly the left goes on the left the right goes on the right and you might need to adjust the position of the brake and finally just mount the light and properly connect it okay we are ready to go let's now talk about the design on this bike this bike looks absolutely beautiful as you may have noticed yeah it's orange and it's very bright and if you've been following my channel you know that i tend to dress always dark colors slightly black as a matter of fact, most of my e-bikes are actually either black or dark gray. It's very strange for me to go with something like that, but I actually personally choose this color. So Veloctric contacted me. They asked me if I wanted to review this bike. So this is a sponsor review. Um, something that I would like to always disclaim it when I get a sponsor. But my opinion is my own opinion. They don't influence on what I say. Uh, I really, truly like this bike. I choose this color personally. I like how here, we have the logo of the brand uh, almost in the same color. This is just dark orange on lighter orange. And I love that they did that. While most other bikes we have the logo here huge with contrasting colors, well, they keep it low key and I really appreciate that. Another thing here is how they have this light blue teal accents. We have one here. We also have one over here. And then we have another one here with the model of this bike, which is the Thunder ST. So this bike comes in two variants and two sizes. So we have the Thunder High Step uh, HT and the Thunder ST Step True. So yeah, you can pass the leg around here. Uh, I would consider this frame to be still a little bit high, but yeah, you can uh, put your leg across. But generally speaking, what this bike uh, really stand up is by not looking electric at all. You can immediately tell by watching it right now, like where, where are the batteries? So the batteries are hidden here on the frame. By the way, the welding is so well made. Another thing that I want to remark here is that since I got this bike somewhere around two weeks ago, I parked it outside my house. So it was 
outdoor the whole time. It rained for quite a few days. I never washed this bike and it still looks like it's brand new. So probably it's the, the painting is such a high quality that yeah, I don't know, it doesn't get dirty or something like that. But generally speaking, everything is very good quality in this bike. So we have the Cell Royale Group seat. I can explain to you how comfortable this seat is. Um, it's a kind of seat that I can sit on it for quite long periods of time. The same can be said about the handles. They're rubber, they're soft, and they're very comfortable and grippy at the same time, so you won't sleep at all. So your hands will be very nicely placed here, and they won't move. Now, another little detail that I want to remark here is here on the wheels. We can see here the wheel model Ultra, uh, and this is black on black with like dark gray or silver. So it's all very discreet. Another thing that is very discreet is the cable here at the front. So we do have a light, the light have a light sensor, which is something new for me with e-bikes. But then the cables look so clean. They, they really put a lot of work into making it look so clean like this. Another thing that is very clean is here. There is no display. And that's the one thing about this bike that I'm not convinced I like. So they have a quad lock mount for your phone. Um, the problem with quad lock mount is that, yeah, if you stick the quad lock adapter in the back of your phone, you do not get MagSafe compatibility. And I do charge my phone with MagSafe. I have an iPhone 14 Pro. I have a power bank with MagSafe. So once you put the quad lock, well, they're not compatible. I would much rather have something like a, like a normal bracket to put my phone and a very small display. But instead what we have is here on the top of the frame, the bottom, that have some, some light that change color. I really like that. So basically the, the white light means um, that it's on, but there is no assistant power. Then we have green light, it will be basically level one. Then we have level two, the blue light, level three for the orange light, red, level four, and purple for level five. And that actually is very intuitive because you just look down, you look at the color and you know in which level you are, which is very simple. We can change the level here. And yet again, this is very, very discreet. We only have three buttons, one to turn on the light and turn it off. And then we have the gear buttons of the levels. Um, right here, we have uh, four LED lights to indicate the battery level. Um, that's pretty much it for this bike. It's just so discreet, so well made. And um, I'm gonna now talk a little about some of the differences between the Velotric Thunder, uh, the standard version and the ST version, because they're not just about the way they looks, there are also some features that are special for the Velotric Thunder. The difference between the Velotric Thunder High Step and the Step True, uh, there are quite so many that I'm actually going to read them out of my phone. So let's begin with colors. So the High Step, the Velotric Thunder 1, uh, comes in frozen blue and crystal black. The colors are pretty cool. The Step True comes in lava, which is the one I have right here, and sun. Now, we also have some uh, pretty significant differences on the specs and also in the price. So this has a range of somewhere around 50 miles, while the Thunder One, the highest step version, it has 70 miles range, which is pretty damn impressive, actually. Actually, 50 miles for me is already quite enough, but well, 70 miles is even better. Now, the price is also different. This is available for $1,599, while the Thunder One, the highest step version, is $1,000. $799. So that is $300 difference. It's pretty significant difference. So even so, there is more range and some different um, technology built into the bike. Uh, well, you're actually paying for that. So some of that technology that I'm talking about is this bike, the Step True, the one I have, has Apple Find Mine and Auto Headlight. So the light here will automatically turn on when it detects that it's too dark. And this is pretty cool. And, and you have Apple Find Mine. So basically it's like built in an air tag. I wouldn't say this is like an anti-death system that is very effective, but yeah, it can definitely help you find your bike in case someone steal it or you lose it. Uh, and it's something that, well, they go way beyond other e-bike companies that have absolutely nothing. So having Apple Find Mine, well, it is kind of nice. But in the other hand, the Velotric Thunder 1, the highest step version, you have anti-death alert, keyless unlock with fingerprint and proximity, GPS tracking, uh, have customization via riding mode, ride tracking, health, 
uh, tracking and auto head like Senna six, and of course Apple Find My as well. So, yeah, they're quite different when it comes to the technology. I would hope for this bike to maybe even so it cannot have the same range as the highest version because maybe the frame is different and there is not enough space to put all the batteries. But I would like to see all the same technology on both bikes, even so if the price increase as well. But yeah, it is what it is. I really like the step through. I like the way it looks and I like that it's more comfortable to ride. Let's test this bike's performance. I'm gonna start by riding with no assistant on and then I'm gonna start uh, bringing up the levels up one at a time to see how that feels like. Okay, let's go. So now I know no assistance whatsoever. And I gotta say, as a regular bike, this is very lightweight, very easy to ride. If this have no electricity, it's just a bike, just a normal bicycle, I would be very happy with this. It feels really good. I could literally just ride this for long periods of time without having to rely on the electricity, on the system power. Another thing about this bike, I, mean, I would say maybe the highlight on this bike, for an electric road bike, it's just so comfortable. I have tested some other electric road bikes, and I gotta say, this is probably the most comfortable. Okay, I'm gonna go to level one, so I got the green light here on the, on the top of the frame, and now it's just helping, it's relaxing a little bit the the amount of strength that I need to put on my legs. And uh, yeah, like now I can I can ride for really long periods of time. And probably the battery will last me a really long time because it's just level one. So on the Shimano gears and on the four gear, and I have a speed of somewhere around maybe 20 kilometers per hour. This feels very comfortable. So I'm gonna go to level two. I got the blue light on. Uh, yeah, this is a lot more relaxed. And to be honest, it's kind of like, it's like it's asking for more speed. Like I have to go a little bit faster. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go to level three. Now I have the orange light. And yeah, I have to go faster. I need to go to fifth gear on the Shimano. And on the fifth cassette on the Shimano gears. And like I say, I can keep this speed at almost 30 kilometers per hour at the moment. And I can keep this fit for a really long period of time. I'm gonna go to the red light. So this is level four. And yeah, now it's really asking for a speed. Now, if I don't, basically my legs are doing nothing right now. I'm just keeping the motor running. My legs are not really doing much. And then I go to the last gear. So it's purple light. And this is what I need to, I have, I'm being forced to go to the six, maybe seven gear on the Shimano. And I have to go fast. Otherwise, it's, um, I mean, we do have torque sensing. There is torque sensing on this bike, which makes it very smooth when the assistant kicks in. But even so, there is torque sensing. I mean, the, the, the purple light, the level five, I think that's something that I would reserve only for going up hills. Since here out on the city, especially where I am right now with so many cars and people, it would be too fast. So this bike can easily reach 40 kilometers per hour in flat roads. Um, if you get a little bit of the downhill or if you actually put some energy in your legs, you can easily pass at the speed. So it's very fast. And what's surprising that it's also very comfortable. Ooh. The brakes are actually really good. So we have Textro hydraulic brakes, which in combination with these wheels that are very grippy, the brakes are very responsive and give me a lot of confidence. Now, two things, one about the wheel, one about the brakes. Uh, the wheels are traditional road bike wheels. They're not meant to go off road, even so I did it anyways. And I gotta say, it, it handles less than ideal road pretty well. Now, the other thing about the brakes is that um, we have the rear brake on the right side and the front brake here on the left. Now, I usually have it the other way around and I don't know if this is something like for uh, in the American market. So I'm Spanish living in China and here is the other way around and in Europe it's also the other way around, which um, that's remind me that this is an American bike for the American market. But it kind of makes me wonder, is Velotric trying to penetrate the European market with this bike? Because the motors are 350 watts, which makes it a class two e-bike. 
and makes it very close to the standards of the European markets, you have a peak power of 600 watts, which is very powerful for this kind of bike. But this is a bike that it could easily sell very, very good in Europe. We have a 350 watt hour battery that gives an approximate range of somewhere around 50 miles, and that's a pretty good range. Now, here is the thing about the battery. It's hidden here, which makes it look absolutely beautiful, but it's not removable. Now, good thing this bike is very lightweight and very easy to carry around, and it fits on the elevator. That means I can bring it here to the office easily, and I can plug it here. Another one thing that I like is this charging port is very well made. So kudos to them for paying attention to every little detail. Also, the charging cable, it looks very durable and very strongly made. One thing about the charger is at two amps, which is good in one way because it's very small, but it will take quite a few hours to charge. So, you know, it's a trade-off. If you have a bigger charger, it's gonna be heavy and you don't wanna carry that in your backpack, but it will charge the bike faster. Two amps is like, it's okay. It's pretty much a standard with most e-bikes on this category. Before I sign out, I just wanna make sure that I talk about some of the special features that this bike have that uh, they really are quite unique in a way. So, well, first is the design is so beautiful, but it also happens to be really lightweight. Uh, it's only 16 kilograms, which makes it one of the lightest e-bikes in the market today. Another special feature, like I already mentioned, we have Apple Find Mine. Uh, we have a, a, a lot more features on the high step version, but I happen to have the step through. And something that is also quite good for this bike is that for being a, a road bike, it's formidable comfort. Or something that I already mentioned <laughs> while riding the bike, it just doesn't even feel like a road bike. It feels like an on-between of a road bike and, you know, the, the seating position is a little bit more high up. Um, I don't know, I just feel that it's very comfortable, very lightweight. Uh, it doesn't only feel like it's lightweight while you're riding it, but also when you want to carry it with you, I can literally fit it on my elevator, bring it back home, take it down the stairs. It's just very, very light. And another thing that is special on this bike is the torque sensor. And you might be thinking, torque sensor. Okay, there are many bikes out there with uh, torque sensor, right? Yeah, it's true. But how many bikes at $1,500 or less, this bike is $1,499, how many bikes do have torque sensor at that price point? I think it's the only one. So at this particular price, it's very difficult to, to have these kind of features all put together into one bike. And I think that's what only a company like Velotric can do. So Velotric, in case you didn't know, is backed by Lime Company. So the Lime e-bikes and uh, PEBs, they own Velotric. So they have so much money for the R&D department. So they can develop all these features and put them together on a bike that is very affordable. Uh, and I don't think any other company can do that. So it is very special. Uh, also, customer service, I found out to be really, really good. They're based in America. And yeah, I would say it's, it's a, a really great value for anybody who want to get an e-bike, comparing to, especially with other e-bikes that with similar specs are like maybe almost twice the price. So they, they really do offer a lot for what, you, for what you're paying. I'll make sure to make um, a link with a discount on, on the description down below. I'm not sure if I can get a discount, but I will try my best. Uh, if you buy this bike, please make sure to use my affiliate so you will help this channel grow. Like I said before, this is a sponsor review. I have to disclaim that, but they did not tell me what to say. Um, this is entirely my own opinions. I actually really like this bike. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll catch you up on the next video. Adios, amigos.